Hey, hey, what do you do when you and your partner don't see eye to eye on things? Uh-oh, looks like we're probably sideways. Jason's going to fix it. All right, I think that that works. If not, we're sideways in the feed and we don't care. So, <laughs> what do you do when you and your partner don't see eye to eye on a goal? Uh, hey, I'm, J I'm Cece. And I'm Jason Cheney. And we are talking about what you do in this circumstance today. It's kind of funny. We get asked questions about things like this all the time. And we decided, let's just hop on Facebook and have the conversation. So, right now, Jason is actually working on a goal I want nothing to do with. <laughs> what is that, Jason? It's um, becoming fluent in Spanish. Mm. And so, you would think I'm probably going to a university, have a tutor. No. I just walk around on the street, talk to people. Yeah. And I'll just keep talking, keep talking. They'll correct me. Then I'll pick up words and I'll just find a way, hey, why are you saying this? They'll explain to me in Spanish. And then I eventually understand. So, that's what I do. Like, I go to nail shops and get my manicure and pedicure just so I can go listen to people. And then I just follow conversations. Which is crazy, right? <laughs> so we're currently in Colombia, Jason and I, uh, and we need to know Spanish, right? It's a very obvious goal that we should share. We should both <laughs> feel like this is a very important thing for us to do. And I am just not in the mental space for it. And I, I have had lots of excuses, right? Like first I was working on my degree and it was like, I'm not making any space for language. Like that makes no sense to me. Now I don't have that excuse, right? Like I'm Dr. Cheney now, it doesn't matter. Um, but we're still, you know, Jason was really, really hungry for this. And so yesterday, Jason <laughs> thought it would be this really great idea for me to go to the local nail shop. Um, Cause it's right, literally right next to our house, there's a little nail shop. Um, and he was like, you can practice your Spanish. Sound like a good idea to me. It felt like a really good idea to him. He thought he was doing like this really great thing. He was getting me a manicure, which is really <laughs> sweet. And I love him for it. Like, thank you so much, honey. But the pressure of not being able to communicate was so stressful for me. And it, it brought up an interesting conversation, right? Because in a lot of areas of our life where we have goals and we don't see eye to eye, um, we typically are really good about giving each other the space to do what you need to do that makes you the most comfortable. In this particular situation, Jason made me so incredibly uncomfortable. And I was like, what were you thinking? What were you doing? And so um, it was, uh, go ahead. But look at her nails. Like, look at her nails. <laughs> like, exactly. So. so it was a really great experience and I'm grateful for it. And I'm grateful for Jason for doing that for me. And we had to have the conversation about, hey, where you're at right now is great, and I'm excited for you, and I'm, I'm proud of you, and I'm happy that this is something that you're working on. I'm not in that space yet, right? And like, that can be a difficult conversation for some people, right? To actually say, look, I'm not, I'm not ready to be like pushed into that just yet. Like, Duolingo, okay, right? But like actually sitting in a room with other people who uh, are speaking another language, I mean, it was, it was really, really difficult for me. And so that was, you know, a, a tough conversation that we had to have. Now, what are, what's another example of a time where we've had a goal we didn't see eye to eye on? I think one that people probably wouldn't even believe was uh, when we first started transitioning our eating. Oh, good one. So like you went vegan before I did. Yeah. And so it took me, I think it took me maybe about a month or two to follow up with me and I started. Yeah, I think you started transitioning like a month or two later and yeah. then a little bit more time actually passed, um, like maybe another month or two and then uh, you went full plant-based, right? So that I think is um, another really good example. And so uh, what do you think, um, were some some of the reasons that we were able to handle the separate transitions well, even though we weren't seeing eye to eye on that that particular goal? Well, I think that one we didn't take it personal. Like I didn't take it personal. She was like, "Oh, I want to stop doing this." I'm like, "Hey, okay, you do what you want to do." Good tip. Right, was, not taking it personal. Because yeah, she was researching a lot of stuff, and so I, I knew she had her reasons for doing it. I just didn't feel like doing the research. I'm not a research type person. I'm mm -hmm. more of a Tell me to do something and I'll just either do it or if I don't. Yeah. That's just how I work. And so we started cooking meals separately. So since I mainly cook, I would make her meals first and then start learning, okay, what do you need me to make for you? How do I need to prepare? And then as time went by, I started asking, why is it this? Why are they telling you to do that? 
And so as I start understanding the why and uh, what made her want to start changing, like, I just like, okay, let me just go ahead and start doing it too. Um, after all the medical conditions that I had, it's like, I might as well go keep going the extra step to get better. Yeah. So what I think is important about what Jason is just describing, not like the nail case, right? In <laughs> this case, I gave him the space to do what he felt was best for him in that moment. However, when he asked questions about why I was making a certain choice or why I was doing things differently, I used that as the opportunity to share. I didn't like force information on him. I wasn't like, hey, you've got to do this thing with me. Um, but he gave me the space to show up and do what I need to do for myself. And I gave him the space to grow into um, readiness to make that change, right? And so I think it's also important that we talk support a little bit, right? Because I think a lot of times people will be like, well, you know, I want to do this thing, but my my spouse isn't supportive yeah. of that, right? Yeah, that's something you hear a lot. Of. Yeah, we hear a lot of that. We've actually gotten some messages on LinkedIn because we do a, a weekly, uh, talk show i don't know how to describe that a <laughs> weekly show on linkedin where we kind of do this thing we call it chat with the cheneys and we get that a lot people are like well you know my spouse just doesn't support me and my big thing when it comes to support is what would what does support actually look like in a certain situation right like in in the eating example right jason didn't have to eat like me to support me that wasn't a requirement i didn't require him to, to do that. I didn't require him to accept my choice. I didn't require him to approve of my choice, right? But he was able to support me in other ways. Like he helped cook some of my meals. Like that was really cool. He, we still ate dinner together. We still ate our meals together. So we still had, you know, that loving um, conversation and, and time together. And that's what support looked like in that situation. So just because your partner doesn't raise their hand and say, hey, I'm gonna do that thing with you, doesn't mean they don't support you, but you might wanna have a conversation about what it means, what their support could look like in that situation. Does that make sense? No, that's really good. And I think that's a good point too that, you know, sometimes I think we feel like, oh, we can't eat together or we can't do this anymore because this person's changing. It's like, just have your separate meals. Yeah. And you can still come together. You Don't let anything drive the way, don't let stuff drive a wedge between the family. Right, like, right. I always keep the family there it's just as individuals you're changing that's i think that's how we usually look at it yeah i think that's a really good point i think that's a really good point is that that goal isn't something that has to be um that has to create tension in the relationship right you can still love and support each other while that other person is growing in an area right and your spouse might eventually grow into that space or they might not, but you have to be comfortable enough with whatever that choice is for you that you you can stand up to it and continue to do it even without them doing it with you. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> makes sense. Okay, any other last tips that you want to share around this topic of uh, supporting your spouse or um, what to do when you don't see eye to eye? I would say really just my biggest tip would just say find a safe place. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be a safe place to where wherever you want to talk about your individual goals, where it's no hostility, no judgment, just a safe place to just get gets what gets what's get what in your head out. Yeah. So you both can just talk about it. Yeah. Really you have to be able to have a conversation. And sometimes conversations are hard, right? Like even in a relationship, even with somebody that you love, right? Sometimes those conversations can be hard. But if you don't have them, that will help that will start to create resentment for you. And that will ruin your relationship. So I think that that's actually a really good point. So anyways, <laughs> thank you for hopping on today. We so appreciate you for spending a little bit of time with us. Did you like me having Jason on for this Facebook Live? We don't typically do very much of this, but I said, you know what? <laughs> Let's, let's hop on with me, honey. Support me in my goal. <laughs> now look, if you're somebody who has a health goal, um, maybe you've got some health challenges, maybe you've got some health or fitness goals that you're trying to uh, make happen in 2020, uh, and you're just not sure exactly how to do that, you'd like some support, you um, might be looking for some products to help you along the line with that, shoot me a message. Uh, and let's have a conversation and see if there's anything we can do to help support you in that goal. Otherwise, uh, thanks for hopping on. Look forward to chatting with you soon. And maybe I'll bring this guy on a time <laughs> or two again in the future. All right, till next time. Ciao. Ciao.